What is going on everyone, it is Garrett and welcome to a new tutorial. In today's video we're going to be talking about how to use the grid method in your logo designs. In today's tutorial we are not going to be sketching, however I'm going to be showing you guys the easiest way to basically get your sketches perfect for this logo design tutorial. And it's basically show you guys some examples of what I use and stuff like that. So really quickly if you guys do want to download the grid that I have on the screen right now, there's going to be a little link in the description below. You guys can go download that so you guys have the same exact screen that I'm looking at. I am going to be creating a new one very soon, however this basically works perfectly fine, I've been using it for the past 4 months and stuff like that. So going over the grid method very quickly, it's basically working square by square and making everything spaced out. Now this is very very helpful, especially if you're using graph paper or dotted notepads or anything like that. Just because the spacing is already done for you on your sketch and you already sketched it out basically as perfect as you can. And it's basically all you have to do now is transfer it over digitally. So in today's tutorial we're going to be vectoring this H I have on the top. I've also done this JT on stream so if you guys want to go check that out the link in the description is going to be below for that. I'll also show you what that logo looks like vectored in a little bit. But for this H logo you can see that I have everything basically planned out to every single dot and everything looks very very clean very symmetric and everything like that so it's just really really goodly spaced out it's basically what you want when you're sketching your logos for the thing that i used to um, sketch this out on i used a thing called field notes it's basically a little pad that aaron draplin made and you can basically go through this you can buy a pack of like three of them for like nine dollars or something like that like very very cheap and it basically lasts you the longest time so definitely go throughout this on um, the link in the description is going to be down below and it's basically very very helpful especially when you're doing logo designs on the go there's a countless times that i've been waiting for like my girlfriend outside or something like that i've been drawing logos in my notebook and then go home vector them and make a few dollars and pay for the date that we went on or you guys can go over to amazon and type in like dot pad or graph paper anything like that you can basically use for your designs now by no means you have to use this you can really go out and basically go steal some graph paper from your math teacher. You can ask your parents to go out and buy it for you. It's very, very cheap to buy graph paper. This dotted note stuff is a little bit more expensive. However, I think that it's very, very helpful. But like I said, graph paper works just as well. So going back into Illustrator to start this logo design job up, like I said, when you're sketching everything out, you want it to be perfect to the dots and you want to make sure that everything has a nice vibe to it. I'm going to be going a whole another video exactly how to sketch these kind of things out. However, just today's video, we're going to be going over the grid method. So to just take this H logo, I'm going to unhide my locked layer. I'm going to paste it in here and there's a few ways we can do this. One way I do not really recommend is just putting it to a corner and just enlarging it and seeing if I can make a line up a little bit. And stuff like that like you know it lines up well but it's just not what I really really want so the way I like doing it is I hide my sketch on the left hand side or I have my notebook in front of me I zoom in and then I count these boxes of the logos for example 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so there's gonna be 11 boxes tall worth of logo so I'm gonna take my rectangle tool make a new layer and then of course since the grid is right there I can just basically hover over to the top right hand corner of a box and the countdown 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 boxes worth and then it can lock on each side of the perfect already done squares and now that you have that done it's basically you know fair game from here it's very easy so if you just click right here on your little rectangle that you made you can see that I have a little space right here so I can hit control C control F click on the rectangle I just duplicated, hold shift and just drag it over to the left a little bit over one square total so now that I have this gap right here and now I have this little bottom one filled in so I hit control C control F once again drag this top all the way down to that line and then across this line and then it's basically the same thing control C control F you want to drag this to the top and you basically have a little cutout of a rectangle right now and now that you have that, you can hit Control C, Control F, and you can count over how many boxes that you went over to add this next layer, which is basically the same thing. You just have to move it. Now I did one, two, three, four boxes. So one, two, three, four. It would start on that one. So I can just drag that over, holding Shift. And now it's just really, really easy. So you have one, two, three, four. This is on the fifth, and this is one, two, three, four, and this one's on the fifth. So 
like I said, you go one, two, three, four, and on the fifth you have one box, and you can just do the box completely through everything, and now you can skip one, hit control C, control F, and put this down as well, and now you have this done. And now it's really the more kind of complicated way that I wanted to talk more into the tutorial about. So now that you guys have got this far with your logo and you have these kind of little bit of a breaks through it, I personally, when I draw mine, I have them cut down half the box, which is going to be half of this rectangle. So what I like doing is I zoom out, I grab a rectangle, I hit Control C, Control F. I drag it to the top and then I hit Control C, Control F once again and I grab it right here on the bottom and I drag it up just halfway until it says center on my screen and then I just bring it down and this is basically going to be half of that. There's also other ways to do that however I just think that that's definitely the easiest. And I make the color something more distinct that I can overlay on things so I usually use like a red or a blue or something like that. And then you want to follow your sketch of course, excuse me, of course just look over to the left a little bit. I have this part cut out, just hover this little rectangle through there, hit Control c Control f right here this breaks down so I can put that right there. And don't worry about making sure that this is exactly perfect, you can hide the grid now that you're not really using it. And then you can hit Control c Control f again, take this, hold shift, make it up you know, 90 degrees, put this up. And it's just really like placing rectangles everywhere now. Like it's not as confusing as everyone thinks. Everyone thinks that logo design is like the most difficult. I think that the most difficult part of this is definitely sketching. So what I'm doing right now is I'm basically just placing the rectangle that I have wherever I know that there's going to be cutouts of the logo. So now that I have that done, I can hide, or excuse me, I can highlight all of this and I can grab my shape builder tool, which is right here. You're going to hit control, or excuse me, you can hit shift M to get it. And you want to hold alt, and you want to click basically on the red rectangles that are covering, you know, spaces that you want to be deleted. So just make sure you're hitting alt, and it'll pop up like a checkerboard, and you can basically click around there. Um, I'm going to have to add another rectangle right there. And of course, you can easily go back and add another one. You don't have to make everything perfect. Highlight, highlight everything. Just delete. And it's very, very, very simple, just like this. Make sure that you don't go into the black, because if you do that, you have to hit Control Z and do it over again. That's why I like taking my time and doing this kind of stuff. Highlight it over. Boom, boom, and done. And now that you have that done, we're gonna just click out of that. We gotta finish just one more thing. Must have overlooked it. And you can take this little less rectangle, you can basically delete that. And you basically have an H logo done. Now this is just really easy, now you can basically hide or unhide your grid. And now everything is perfectly done for you. Now that's basically the very easy way to do it. Now if you get into more complex things, such as the, um, the JT that I did, that's when things start to get a little bit more confusing. For example, let me hop over to my Dribbble account so I can just basically show you what the logo looks like vectored. It's right here, you guys can check it out in the description below as well as so you guys can see it on your own screen. What you really have to do and really have to think about is when you draw this, it might be three boxes worth it, worth of space. However, I only have half a box covered in each line. So I'm gonna do the T really quickly for you guys. So let me just grab a black fill and make a new layer. And I really have, let's just say how many boxes we went up in this one. We have three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven and a half. So we're gonna go just basically two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven and a half. And now it's gonna get a little bit more confusing. So you have to make this half the square. And this is when the grid method, I'm telling you guys, comes in handy so much more than you would ever think. Because all you have to do is hit Control C, Control V, and know that you have to skip a half and put this on the next half. And it just becomes so much easier because now that you have that done, you can highlight these three because it's already done spacing wise. Hit Control C, Control F. Make sure you grab that rotate tool and rotate it just 90 degrees. And this goes over one, two, three, four, five, six. So just make sure that it goes over one, two, three, four, five, six. 
highlight it all, grab your shape builder tool. You gotta make sure that when you do, of course, put them down that they are interlocked together because there's just a certain times if you don't have them interlocked, then you're not gonna be able to take your shape builder tool and delete it. I have mine go up and across, so this goes up, across, up, across. And we could finish it off. We can just grab like this, hit Control C, Control F, rotate it 90 degrees, Control C, Control F, rotate it 90 degrees. And then we take our Shape Builder tool and we finish it off. And we have just a regular old T. And of course, you know, we can duplicate this, transform it, reflect vertically, and do whatever you want to it. But um, that's basically the whole entire gist of everything. That's basically how I use the grid method to do my logos. I think that personally, it is definitely the easiest way. There's a lot more common things out there. However, I do recommend using this just because you can use it in any type of logo. You guys can use it on really, really anything. When I tell you guys that a lot of my logos are done using the grid method, you can go back into my streams. You can go back into my recent videos and see when I do logo designs. I always start off with the grid method. Sometimes like in this logo, I always take away and I just start messing around with things. But like my Klim Fit logo that you guys can see in the thumbnail, that was used the grid method. This Azea uh, Granadas logo was using the grid method. So just really, really easy. You guys have to take into consideration when you're using it. And like everything, it just happens so fluently. Like if you have to make, you know, circles, you just basically make a big circle, go from corner to corner, hit control C, control V hold shift and alt and then you can go up literally one square hit control c control f you can go up another square control c control f and you can go up another square all in just basically a very fast and easy movement and then you can highlight it all and then you have the start to a letter g you can just basically mess around with this kind of stuff and like i said guys it's just so easy it's so fluent and i just recommend everyone messing around with it just for a little bit See if you guys like it or not, and see if this tutorial actually helped you or not. And if it did, make sure to leave a thumbs up on the video and share it with your friends because it means a whole lot to me. And if you guys can turn the notifications on my channel, there's going to be a little bell if you hop over to my channel just like this. You guys can turn on the notifications on my channel so you guys can get uploaded whenever I, you know, start doing. So there's going to be a little subscribe button if I view myself as a returning subscriber. You guys can tick the bell on my channel to be notified whenever I upload, which is going to be immense help, especially when I start streaming more, when I start doing more videos and stuff like that. So definitely, if you guys could, just click that and uh, we'll go from there. So if you guys have any suggestions for the next tutorial, you guys have any requests, please let me know in the comment section below. I do want to tell you guys right now that I have a logo design tutorial plan. It's going to be more of a modern logo, such as the one in the H that we did in this video, the Klimfit logo, a bunch of kind of stuff like that we're going to be going over in another tutorial. But like I said, guys, thank you for checking out the video. Just make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn the notifications on. Join my Discord. All that kind of stuff. And I'll see you guys in my later on videos. Peace out.